Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope you can all hear me. Let me quickly summarize what we have done uh, in the last class and then go ahead. So in the last class, we actually started a new section on machine learning. And we discussed in, in brief, we discussed what is supervised machine learning and what is unsupervised machine learning. Uh, basically, supervised machine learning is when we have data which has a target variable, uh, which has a target class, and we are trying to learn the underlying pattern from the features to the target class. So I, I drew a lot of diagrams like this, where I said that these are the inputs that will go to a model, that will go to a system. And that system comes out with an output of the Y, which is the target variable. And we are trying to understand, or we are trying to comprehend, we are trying to represent uh, this internals of the system by some machine learning algorithm. So that is what supervised machine learning is. Unsupervised machine learning is where this target variable is not available. We only have these inputs. And based on these inputs, we are trying to uh, Cluster, either cluster the data or find anomalies and so on. Anyways, we will limit our discussion to classification learning or we'll limit our discussions to supervised learning under which we saw that there are two main categories, uh, classification and regression. And we'll look at classification for the next few classes. And we talked a bit about the learning process uh, in short, I explain what the training set, validation set, and testing set is. I will talk more of it in detail in, I think, today's class. We'll go ahead and we'll see how it goes. And yes, very quickly, we had started the first classifier, the K nearest neighbors. Okay. And we also discussed how K nearest neighbors work. Uh, nonetheless, I said I will be repeating it again. So today, uh, let, let's take it from there. So K nearest neighbors is one of the simplest classifiers to have. Uh, in short, it is called as KNN. When we say K, uh, the K stands for uh, the number of neighbors that we'll go for. And nearest neighbors are, yeah, that, that's, the, that's the name of the algorithm, okay? Uh, the main idea in K nearest neighbors is this. It says, if you are similar to your neighbors, then you are one of them, okay? If you are similar to your neighbors, then you are one of them. Okay. What this basically means is data points that are similar to each other, they are generally within the same location. Okay. When I say location, we're talking about distance between the distance between the different points. Okay. The distance between several points uh, are less if they have the same class. Okay. So how this algorithm works is this algorithm searches through the entire training data set for k most similar instances and the data with the most similar instances is finally returned as a prediction. So let me show you an example. Okay. So we discussed this example where I said let me let me uh, okay, I'll clean this a little bit. Okay. We look at this example where uh, we have two dimensions. Uh, one feature is plotted on the x-axis, one feature is plotted on the y-axis. And we've got two classes, red and green. Uh, uh, so we could imagine, uh, let's, say, let's say if we are imagining this for the Titanic data set, we could imagine that on the x-axis we have something called as age. Let me write it down. On the y-axis, we've got something called as fair. And red and green, they represent survived or died. Okay. So if we have a data like this, we say that, okay, what happens when I put 
new data points. So let's say if I look at a data point like this, we say, what are the neighbors? They say, okay, let me look at three closest neighbors. The three closest neighbors are green. Since three closest neighbors are green, I would say that this class is also green. Okay. I would say that this is basically survived. When I look at data point like this, uh, here, where we have our neighbors, the three closest neighbors are red, then I would say that that is basically an example of that. And if I look at data point like this, I would have to look at the closest neighbors again. So uh, someone raised a question yesterday, what if we have equal number of neighbors? So for this kind of a problem, uh, where we have two different classes and we would go with only odd number of neighbors. Okay, so we'll find one closest neighbor, three closest neighbors, five closest neighbors, seven closest neighbors, so that we don't end up with a tie. If we don't end up with a tie, if we're going for three closest neighbors, let's say here, we would target that probably this is also red. So it's a very simple algorithm where we are just looking at the neighbor and based on the neighbor, we are deciding uh, how uh, the particular class, uh, particular uh, prediction will be classified. Why don't we take green? So I, I just gave an example. This, this, we have to see what are the closest neighbors. It could have been green also. Okay, I'm not measuring the distance. If I say, okay, the distance here is 2.7. This is here is 2.8. This is here is 2.9. Then I would say the closest is in that case, I would say these are the closest and green will be assigned. Okay. So irrespective of green or blue, uh, green or red, uh, based on the actual distance, we will be deciding or based on the actual neighbors, we'll be deciding what is the class of this variable. Okay. So let us go ahead. Now, when we talk about these ideas, one thing of concern should be, how do we calculate distance? Okay, how do we calculate distance? So there are two two major philosophies uh, that that are used by data scientists. Is either we use something called as Euclidean distance, or we use something called as Manhattan distance, and both are used with uh, uh, with almost equal uh, usage. Okay, Euclidean distance. So let me show you two example. Let me show you two points. Uh, point one. Okay, let me hide the answer. Point one is at one comma one, which is here. And this is point two. And what is the distance between them? So if you are doing Euclidean distance, we will say the distance between them is this, 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 this line. Okay. Now, we know all know Pythagoras theorem. We all know distance formula. Evaluating this is very easy. You will simply say, okay, let me take this formula. Let me take five the x coordinate of the second point and s coordinate of the first point, the subtraction between the x coordinates, it's square. The subtraction between the y coordinates, it's square. We add all these terms up and take its square root. Whatever we get as answer, we will say is the Euclidean distance. Okay. So here we have seen it for a two dimensional point that is uh, one comma one and five comma four. I would argue even if we have multiple dimensions. So let me say if we have two points like this, If we have two points like this and we need to find what is the Euclidean distance, again, the same philosophy will hold true. We would say uh, it would be square root of four minus one, the whole square, plus three minus two, the whole square, plus two minus three, the whole square, plus one minus four, the whole square, okay. which will be basically three square plus one square plus one square plus square that is 9 plus 9 10 11 12 root over 12 okay so did I do that right okay. sorry 9 plus 9 18 19 20 root 20 okay so we could easily evaluate dishes like this uh, between between two points even if they have multiple dimensions the other way of evaluating uh, distance is looking at something called as Manhattan distance. 
And what Manhattan distance does is instead of look, joining this straight line, it says the distance is this plus this. Okay. So it evaluates, uh, yes, 2 root 5. It evaluates the distance based on uh, perpendicular uh, uh, pathways uh, in, in, the, in the corresponding axes. Okay. So the Manhattan distance between these two points will be 3 plus 4. So how would you do that? You would say that, okay, let me take the absolute of these differences. Absolute of 1 minus 5 or 5 minus 1 is 4 plus absolute of 1 minus 4 or 5, 4 minus 1 is 3. So 4 plus 3 gives me 7. Okay. In our second case, okay, can you tell me what will be the Manhattan distance for these two points? Uh, these four dimensional points that I created. What will be the Manhattan distance? Okay, excellent. Eight is the right answer. Let me show you how. So we'll go for this Manhattan distance will be one minus four, modulus of one minus four, sorry, absolute of one minus four plus absolute of two minus three plus absolute of three minus two plus absolute of four minus one, which is three plus one plus one plus three, that is six, seven, eight, eight. Okay. Excellent. So these are two major ways of going around and finding out uh, 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 the distance. People also use higher orders. Okay. So Manhattan is called order one. Euclidean is called order two. Order three of these two points would look something like this. I would say pi and minus one, the whole cube plus four minus one, the whole cube and it's cube root. That would be order three. So like this, people use different distance metrics and different distance metrics gives us uh, slightly different answers, which uh, we have to then again find out which, which is the distance method that works best for us, okay? So I'll talk about optimization, uh, optimizing or tuning our algorithm later on, where this will be important. But for now, we have just seen different ways of evaluating uh, the distance metric. So, uh, yes, uh, normally I, I would go to the notebook and uh, we, would, we would look at how KNN would be implemented. Uh, let us keep this step for the end. And in the end, we will look at uh, how K KNN works out. And, uh, you know, we will we'll club all the algorithms and we'll see how it works out in the end. Before going there, let me. Okay. Great. I have not written down the slide of advantages and disadvantages of KNN. Maybe we can try it out here. Okay. So let me say advantages and then disadvantages. One of the clear advantages of KNN is that KNN is very simple. Okay. It is simple to understand. It is simple to implement, uh, and uh, it is very, uh, it is very logical in which how things work out. Further advantages are the training process is very fast. Okay, training is fast. Training is fast because, uh, and and I'll talk about what is training and what is uh, validation in, in the steps to come. Training is the process where we are using known data to learn some material. So within KNN, the, the only training that actually happens is to remember all the data points. Okay, that is what we call as training. So training is simple. Uh, I, I think probably those are the only advantages that we have with KNN. The disadvantages that we have with KNN are many. Let me point some of them out. One of the disadvantages with KNN is that uh, it only works where distance makes sense. Okay. Or when distance is measurable. Mm -hmm. When distance does not become measurable, then uh, KNN loses its uh, edge. 
So let me give you an example where distance is not measurable. Uh, let's say I have a glass. Uh, so uh, uh, even with our Titanic data set, we had a variable, we had a feature called as title. And title had different values like Mr, Master, Mrs, Others, Miss. In that sense, how do you evaluate distance? Okay. And we could, we could come with some approximation. We could give some numbers to, uh, we could give some numbers to these values, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. And then we could evaluate distance. But the problem is those are artificial distances, right? They, they may not be true distance available within the model. And we are creating something artificial out of it. So generally, when we talk about conceptual ideas, then Kanan fails uh, miserably because there is no way of evaluating distance between concepts. Okay, When they are numbers or they are numerical values, it is easy to evaluate distance. But other cases, it becomes difficult. So that is one of the disadvantages of Kanan. Another disadvantage of Kanan is that it needs the entire uh, uh, training set stored in the application. Okay. Let me write this down. Or uh, needs too much space. So what, what this basically means is let's say I want to predict for a new data. Okay. I get I get this new data for which I need to predict what the uh, what the target is. Okay, so just maybe okay, uh, we we could do a very quick exercise in trying to find out what is the steps that will be taken to implement a KNN. Okay, let me move this here. Same. steps to implement KNN, okay? So when I get a new data like this, and I want to predict what will what will be the class for this, uh, the few steps would be, okay, first uh, find find the neighbors, right? Find the neighbors. So the question is, how do I find the neighbors? In this case, we can visually see and we can say, okay, these are the neighbors, or these are the neighbors, or these are the neighbors, but mathematically, to be able to find the neighbors, I have to evaluate the distance between my test point, that is the point for which I want to predict, and all of my training points. So all of my training points are all these values which are colored as red or green. I need to find the distance between all of these points and my test point. Okay. So let me write this step. Uh, Okay, evaluate the distance between all test and all train. Okay, good. Once I've evaluated the distance, I have a list of distances between all the test points and all the train points. The next step would be sort them. Okay, we have to sort them or out of this order, we have to choose K closest distances. Okay, so say choose K close it distances. Okay. So once we have chosen the K closest distances or the K closest neighbors, neighbors would be the right word because that is what you're doing. Choose the K closest neighbors. Once we have chosen the K nearest neighbors or K closest neighbors, we then we have to find out what is the class of those neighbors. Okay. What is the target class of those neighbors? And based on the target class of those neighbors, we have to choose the majority. Okay. So I'd say choose okay. Mode of the target class of neighbors. Okay. And once we get the mode of the target class of all the neighbors, that will be our prediction. Okay. So that will be our prediction for the test data. So these are the steps that we will, uh, we, we will require to take for implementing KNN. 
now that we know what the steps are you see this point we have to first point okay we have to evaluate the distance between all test points and all train points okay which basically means that if if let's say i am deploying this algorithm once this algorithm is trained and i want to deploy this algorithm on uh, let's say a mobile phone or a smartwatch okay then in that case for the test point i will have to put all of my training data into the mobile phone or all of my training data onto the smartwatch now which is okay if i have maybe 100 200 000 data points but if i have 1 million data points 2 million data points that's a huge amount of storage okay? and that huge amount of storage we cannot deploy on a low powered uh, system okay like a smartphone or like a smartwatch so that would be one disadvantage okay since this needs too much space we cannot deploy it on low powered systems okay or we cannot deploy it on systems with with low memory okay second is uh, my prediction phase is very long okay. prediction phase is very long okay so what i mean is this let's say i get a new data point and my training my training data consists of 10 million data points then i have to find the distance between my new data point and all the 10 million data points once i found the distance then i have to sort or i have to find the closest k neighbors out of those 10 million data points which is a huge uh, time uh, time consumer okay it consumes a lot of time to find the distance between all these data points and uh, to find the to find the again the k nearest neighbors and the mode all of these are very time consuming tasks okay so we see as our data scales as our data becomes bigger and bigger the time that it takes for knn to implement becomes bigger and bigger okay. so those are the advantages and disadvantages of this very simple algorithm uh, let us see a few evaluation metrics that can help us to find out how good or bad we are doing okay so these are commonly used metrics uh, we call them as accuracy precision and there is one more term as i recall in fact let me let me go to the next slide here and then explain these concepts okay so uh, great so imagine this space that we have okay and this is our entire sample space and we have uh, some true examples and some false examples okay so let me show you uh, this entire okay of this square i can divide the square into two parts by drawing this line in between and drawing this line in between divides all of my data into two parts okay uh, for now forget the circle okay just just imagine uh, this part and this part okay and let this data represent our titanic data set so within our titanic data set let's say that this is a set of all of our passengers and we have a line in between on this end we have all the passengers who have who have uh, survived in the titanic event okay on this end we have all the passengers who have not survived in the titanic event okay let me okay I, I hope you understand what this uh, center line divides the data into okay on on the left hand we have data that all the people who have survived on the right hand we have data for all the people who have not survived okay now within this space we create a machine learning algorithm and that algorithm presents or that algorithm says that everything everyone inside the circle have survived and everyone outside the circle have not survived okay we are making a prediction based on the circle and we are saying that everyone inside the circle have survived and everyone outside the circle have not survived okay so which basically then divides our entire space into four different parts okay let me for now say that these four different parts are a b c and d a is this part b is this part c is this part and 
D is this part. Okay. I hope you understand the four different parts that we have. And now looking at the four different parts, let me ask you a question. How, what would we see say is the accuracy of our model? Okay. What is the accuracy of our prediction? So accuracy, uh, as we all understand, is basically the number of times you are right from the total number of times. Okay. The number of times you are right from the total number of times. So using the formula of A, B, C, D, can you tell me how would we write the formula for, for accuracy? What will be on the numerator and what will be on the denominator? Maybe we can do it in two parts. First, you could tell what will be on the denominator? What will be the formula for the denominator? That is the total number of terms. Okay, for accuracy, what should be on the denominator? Okay, excellent. I see an answer A plus B plus C plus D, which is exactly right. A denominator will be all the data points, right? All the data points will evaluate, which help us to evaluate the accuracy. Now, the most interesting question, what will be on the numerator? That is, when are we right? In which sections are we right? A, B, C, and D. Which sections are we right? Okay, people are saying B and C. Some are saying B and D. Okay. Great, I have mixed answers. So mixed answers tells me that I need to explain this concept. So let me again tell you what these four regions are. Okay. So look at this box. This box is all of our sample space. We have divided this box using two shapes. Okay. The first shape is using this line. And what we are saying is everything on the left of this line are people, all these examples. Okay. All these examples of our people who have survived. Everything on the right. That is all examples on the right are people who have not survived. Okay. Very simple. This line divided into two parts. People who have survived, people who have not survived. Now we have another line. We have a circle basically. And the circle is a prediction of our algorithm. Okay. The circle is a prediction of our algorithm. Our algorithm says that everything inside the circle, everything inside the circle are people who have survived. And everything outside the circle, okay, in every direction, everything outside the circle are people who have not survived. Okay, so I, I hope you understand what the circle is and what this line is. Okay, the line is the true answers. Okay, people on left side are people who have survived. This, this, this is what our data tells us. On the right side, people are, are people who have not survived. And our model here is telling that everything inside the circle is true and everything outside the circle is true. So out of these four sections, there will be two sections that are right and two sections that are wrong. The question is which, which sections are right. Okay. Can you again try uh, writing the answers? Okay, I, I still have mixed answers. <laughs> let me let me ask you then very specific questions. Okay, for the section A, for the section A, is our model right or is our model wrong? For the section A, is our model right or is our model wrong? Okay, we have right, right, wrong. Okay, many people are saying right, few people are saying wrong. Let me interpret this for you. Okay, I'll do it for section A. See, section A, in the true sense, they are people who have survived. Okay, section A are people who have survived. How do I know that? Because I look at this line, everything on the left are people who have survived. A is on the left. So A is the section of people that have survived. Is my model telling they are survived or not? My model says that everything inside the circle has survived. Everything outside the circle have not survived. So basically my model is telling that people in A have not survived. In this case, my model is wrong. Why is my model wrong? Because these are people who have survived and my model is saying they have not survived. 
Do you understand this logic? For A? Quickly answer may be yes or no. Okay, I'm getting just two yeses. Okay, I'm getting multiple yeses. I'll explain this once again. Okay, people in A, are we right or wrong? So we know the true value of people in A are people who have survived because everything on the left of this line are have survived. So people in A have survived. Our model is telling that they have not survived because our model says everything inside the circle has survived, outside the circle have not survived. So our model is wrong for A. Okay. So A is A will definitely not be in the numerator. Okay. What about B? Is our model right in B? Yeah, I see. Yes, yes, yes. Excellent. So our model is right in B. Everything on the left survived. B is on the left. B is also inside the circle. So B is right. Our model is saying everyone in B has survived. Okay. What about C? Is our mod? Okay. I'm not putting a tick. What about C? Is the C right or wrong? Okay, again, I have mixed answers. <laughs> let, let me explain. Okay, so C, C comes on the right side of this line. Everyone on the right side of this line are people who have died, who have not survived. Okay, people on the right side of the line are people who have died, not survived. Our model says that inside the circle, we have survived. So section C, even though they have died, our model is telling that they have survived which says that C is wrong. Okay, our model is wrong in C. Okay, do you understand this? And finally, let me look at section D. Section D, are we right or are we wrong? Okay, now I have at least one kind of answers, which is right. So section D is the right. Why? Our model says, so in the true sense, everything on the right have not survived. Uh, our model says that everything outside the circle have not survived. So this section D is right. Now in this idea, when we understand uh, A, B, C, D, can you tell me how do we, what will be the numerator for accuracy? Ah, excellent. It is B plus D. Okay. Let me write it down here. B plus D is the accuracy for our model. Okay. So our accuracy is the number of times we are right. So we will be right when we are in, we will be right when we are in section B and section D. Section B, we are saying, let me highlight it. In section B, we are saying that all these people have survived. They have truly survived and our model also says that they have survived. So we are right. In section D, our model says all these people have died and they are on the right hand side of this line. So we know that all this section is right. Section A, we are wrong because these are people who have actually survived, but our model is telling that they have not survived. And section C, we are wrong because these people are actually people who have not survived. They have died and our model is telling that they have survived. Okay. Uh, because of this, now we have four sections A, B, C, D. Out of which B and D, we are right. And A, B, C, D is the total sense. So that becomes the denominator. I hope you understand what accuracy is. Okay, Accuracy is the number of times you are right divided by the total number of times. Okay. Let us look at two more interesting things. So here I am trying to hide my answer, but I, I think you can still see it. Let me talk about this here. Okay. We talk about two more metrics called as precision and recall. Okay. We talk about two more metrics, precision and recall. Okay. What is precision? Precision is when we say something is true, how often are we right? Okay. Let, let me repeat that again. When we say something is true, 
how often are we right okay so within our model within our prediction when which are the sections which we are saying people have survived okay which are the sections in which we are saying people have survived can you write it in the text it's a combination of a b c d uh, which are the sections that our model is telling where people have survived okay i have mixed answers some are saying only b some are saying b and c so which are the places which we which our model is saying people have survived see our model says everything inside the circle has survived okay everything inside the circle has survived that is what our model says so our model is basically saying that section b and section c are the people who have survived okay so if i have to see look at precision we are asking the question which are the places that people have survived and uh, sorry what i said about precision is precision is basically how often are we right when we say something is true how often are we right so our model is saying b and c are the people who have survived in which cases are we right we are only right in the b case okay we are not right in the c case we are right in the b case because those are people who are actually survived among the among the total number of people that we say survived so precision is given by b divided by b plus c okay let me also take some numbers for you okay so let me say that a is a is let's say uh 25 b is 75 c is 25 and uh d is 75 okay so let's say these are the number of people present in a b c and d so what will be the precision of our model what will be the precision of our model in terms of numbers okay 75 3 by 4 percent perfect okay so our model is right 75% of the time okay so i'll write it 75% that means that uh, uh, 3 out of 4 times our model is right and that is our precision let's look at another term called as recall so precision and accuracy are some things that people may have already heard but if you are not from the data science community it is uh, very unlikely that you have heard recall so recall is i'll i'll say the statement recall and then i'll explain what it means what recall basically means is of the of all the values that are true how many have we captured of all the values that are true how many have we captured okay so let me ask you a question in the denominator what are the values what are the sections which have all the true values okay that means what are the sections in which people all the people have survived which are the sections in people in which people have survived oh these things are really confusing for you guys right okay yes i have one answer oh excellent now i'm getting the right answers a and b are the right answer okay which are the sections in which people have survived people have survived in a and b you see this vertical line is a line that divides my sample space into two parts everything to the left of the line are people who have survived everything to the right of the line are people who have not survived to the left of the line we have sections a and sections b so these are people who have survived so i i asked what are all the trues what are all the people who have survived so denominator will be a plus b okay of these of the sections of of all the people that have survived which are the people that our model is telling is survived so our answer is very simple it is b so out of all the a plus b people our model is telling that b people have survived what is the recall percentage so a recall percentage is again 75 divided by 100 which is 75 percentage 
So we have a recall of 75% and we have a precision of 75%. Okay. Let me now zoom out and show you my entire screen. What does this basically mean? So this basically means is when we say something is true, when we say someone has survived, we are 75% right. Okay. And when we say all the people that have survived, we are capturing 75% of the people who have survived. We are not capturing everything. We would have captured everything if we would have predicted everything on the left is true and everything on the right is false. So let me ask you, I hope you understand what precision and recall is. Let me ask you a question. Uh, okay. Okay. What will be the, our ideal model? Okay. We have now four sections, A, B, C, D. What will be our ideal model? When I say ideal model, what I'm asking is, uh, how can I have a hundred percent precision and a hundred percent recall? What should our model say? Our model, uh, which sections should our model say as true? Or which sections should our model say as everyone survived in these sections? I'm only asking the survived part, okay? Which section should our model say are people who have survived? Okay. <laughs> no, I have again mixed answers. So I'll repeat, listen very closely to the phrasing of my question, okay? Out of the four sections, A, B, C, and D, if I want a 100% accurate model, which sections should my model say are people who have survived? Okay, now I have some right answers. So our model should say survived for sections A and B. Okay, if our model says that all the people in section A and section B are survived, our model will be 100% accurate. Why? Because this line divides in two parts. Left of the line are all the people who have survived. Right of the line are all the people who have died. Our model will be right if we say that this section, this entire section is people have survived. That is A and B. If our model says that all the people in A and all the people in B have survived, our model will be 100% accurate. Thereby, if our model says that all the people in C and all the people in D have not survived, they have died, our model will be 100% accurate. Okay. So this is a this is a bit maybe uh, I I understand the confusion that you have probably the first time I heard these terms of accuracy precision and recall it was difficult for me to to understand also it takes some amount of getting uh, acquainted to it uh, spend some time in in looking at this example also you can go to Wikipedia so this is this is an image taken from Wikipedia you can go to Wikipedia and search for metrics like precision and recall. And you can read some more material that can help you understand what actually precision is and what actually recall is. Okay, I've tried my best to explain on this end, but I understand that it is, it is a complicated topic. It's not very complicated. It, it takes just some amount of time, some amount of practice to, under, to understand these terms. Okay. Let me then go ahead. Now, when I look at precision and recall, uh, those are two terms. And uh, sometimes it can be difficult to compare between algorithms. So let me, let me give you two models. Okay. Or let me give you three models. I have model one, which has, let's say model one has a precision of 80% and a recall of 85%. Okay. Model two has a precision of 90% and a recall of 70%. And model three has a precision of 100% and a recall of 40%. Okay. So I have these three models. Can you tell me which model is best? Model one, model two, or model three? Okay, so I have mixed answers, which is what I would expect. So if you ask me the question, which model is best, uh, I cannot answer it. Okay, uh, because 
there are two numbers and it is difficult to come up and say which number which which of these combinations will work out best okay so here we have to ask the question what is more important for us is precision more important for us or recall more important for us okay so let, maybe even before going ahead let me give you examples where where precision and recall makes sense mm. okay uh, let's consider uh, let's consider an example where we where we are looking at uh, a traffic problem okay so uh, we on a, on on an intersection we have cameras installed and that cameras uh, identify if someone has broken a traffic rule or not okay so if someone has broken a traffic rule that camera records the material it gives it to a machine learning algorithm and the machine learning algorithm tells that whether there was a, there was a trouble or, so uh, the 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 vehicle number so and so vehicle number has broken the traffic rule or not okay so that is our uh, that is our machine learning problem okay let me repeat the machine learning problem uh, we have an intersection at which on which we have a camera and we are trying to predict if someone if uh, uh, if a particular number plate has broken the traffic rule or not in this case what do you think is more important is precision more important or recall more important let me let me explain to you what precision and recall means in this situation what precision means in this situation is when our model says that someone has broken the traffic rule uh, the model is 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 very right okay the model with a huge confidence can tell if someone has broken the rule or not but does our model capture everything so let's say out of 10 people who break the rule our model only captures four people okay it does not capture all the people but whenever it says that someone has broken the rule they have actually broken the rule and the model helps in 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 sending uh, in, in sending a uh, in sending a uh, what do you say a fine to the people's bank accounts okay in this case what would you think is more important do you think that precision is more important or do you think that recall is more important okay so i have precision as one answer Oh, many people are saying recall is important. So uh, let me tell you the implication of recall. Okay, the implication of recall is uh, that uh, that we will capture everyone who has who has broken the who has broken. Okay, let let me compare the three situations we have. Okay, uh, in in model three, we are saying hundred percent precision, forty percent recall. That means. Let's say out of ten cases, out of ten cases, my model says that uh, four. Uh, my model says that five people have broken the uh, law, and we are to find them. And five people have not broken the law. In fact, we see that all of these ten people have broken the law. Okay. So, in fact, I should I should write it as four and six. Let me write this: four and six. Okay, and we have we are measuring for ten people, and these four people, uh, all these ten people have actually broken the law. My model says that these four person has broken the law. Okay, so in this case, uh, uh, for for all the ten people that have broken the law, my model says four people have broken the law. What is the precision? So precision will be hundred percent. Why? Because all these ten people have broken, my model is telling four people have broken. Of all the four people that my model is telling has broken the law, they are true. So my precision is a hundred percent. When I look at recall, my model is saying that these six people have not broken the law. In fact, these six people have also people from this ten which have broken the law. So my model is only uh, okay. My model is only uh, forty percent right. Okay, that means my model just is able to capture the forty percent, and it is not able to capture all the six. Now, if I charge these four people uh, with a fine, my model is right, which is good. But if I charge, let's say my model was to charge people who have not broken the law, and uh, we are charging them a fine, uh, it will be a big blunder, right? How can you charge fine to people who have not broken the law because your model was not accurate? Okay. Now, in this case, there may be 
in this case there may be some cases where uh, you may miss finding a people finding some people and that is fine okay even if you miss finding some people that have actually broken the law it is not a problem because it doesn't harm anybody right but if you if you charge someone who has who are innocent with a fine that is wrong okay so in this case i would argue as many of you said precision is the right answer i would we would have to give more priority to precision in the traffic problem case than recall and if precision is our priority then i would say that maybe model 3 or model 2 are better than model 1 okay because we are looking at this one number in other case let me give you an example where recall is more important okay uh, so we have a situation when we are look we have a model that look at M, that looks at mri scans and depending upon what depending upon the mri scan we say if someone has cancer or someone does not have cancer okay and this is the first stage where our machine learning model will be looking at the answer once the machine learning model has says that someone has cancer then a, a, a professional that is a, a doctor with multiple years of experience will look at the cases that the, that the model says has cancer and then based on that he will make the final decision so our machine learning model is actually doing shortlisting okay in that shortlisting do you think precision is more important or recall is more important so precision means uh, when our model says someone has cancer they actually have cancer and recall means that we are able to capture all the number of cases that have cancer ah excellent so here recall will be more important right so even if i make some wrong predictions even if i tell someone has cancer that does not have cancer this is fine but i should never miss an example that has cancer and my model is saying that they don't have cancer why because then i will not have any way of telling of taking the mri scan to the doctor who will verify Okay. so here we see that there are different scenarios where precision is more important and different scenarios where recall is more important but when i give a model like this when i give two numbers it becomes difficult for us to choose an example okay so for this we have another metric called as f1 score and f beta score what is f1 score f1 score is basically so both both of these examples will take precision and recall and will give you one number out okay so so if i give you uh let's say for all the three models okay for all the three models uh we say that precision and recall are equally important okay both precision and recall are equally important even in that case it is difficult for us to tell model 1 is good model 2 is good model 3 is good but if i give you another metric called as f1 score and i have f1 score like this 89 87 and uh, 80 okay so if i have f1 score as 89 87 and 80 i can easily look at the f1 score and tell that model 1 is more accurate okay we can say that model 1 is more accurate why because it has an f1 score which is higher than the other two how is f1 score evaluated f1 score is evaluated as a harmonic mean of precision and recall so basically if i take 1 divided by 1 by precision plus 1 by recall you will end up with you will end up with two times okay you will end up with pr on the numerator and you will end up with p plus r so oh, where we get the two times from let me just see okay so this is 2 divided by 1 by p plus 1 by r okay am i doing it wrong i am not sure just one second i would say r plus p divided yes fine this is the formula uh, that gives us our f1 score maybe i am doing wrong and <laughs> i'm i'm not really sure okay nonetheless uh the f1 score is evaluated uh, by 2 to multiplied by precision uh, times recall divided by precision plus recall that gives us this one number f1 score and using that f1 score we can see if our model is right or wrong 
but the problem is uh, or the thing is f1 score uh, equally divides uh, priority between precision and recall it gives equal priority to precision and equal priority to recall sometimes we want a case where we want to give more priority to precision and less priority to recall in that case we use a formula called as f beta score okay so f beta score is given by uh, 1 plus beta square multiplied by precision times recall divided by beta square times precision plus only recall okay so if we have it in these terms let me let me try to simplify this so this would look something like this okay so this would be 1 divided by beta square precision divided by 1 plus beta square divided by pr plus r divided by 1 plus beta square pr okay in this case we could say that p and p get cancelled r and r get cancelled and we are left with uh, this term okay so in this case let's say if i want to give more importance to precision if i want to give more importance to precision should beta have a high value that is uh, uh, much greater than 1 or should beta have a low value that is much lesser than 1 okay if i want to give more importance to precision then what should we do okay so in this case let let us let us imagine if beta is equal to 0 what will happen so if beta is equal to 0 we will end up with what we will end up with on on this side this will be 0 divided by 1 so this will be just 1 by r and if beta is 0 this will be 1 by p is it sorry this will be 0 by r 0 by r and 1 by p so 0 by r means this is not considered and this evaluates to only p precision okay uh, so 1 by 1 by p p will go in the numerator you will end up with p precision so if beta is equal to 0 we see that precision is given more value okay so beta equal to 0 for precision if i want to give recall as more value let me take higher values of beta okay so if i take values of beta maybe equal to 1000 then what do i have then i have here uh, 1 divided by 1000 square divided by 1001 square into 1 by r plus 1 divided by 1001 square into p so since i have this value here where i have a huge denominator i could say that this term comes out to be 0 1000 square and 1001 square roughly equal to 1 and we are left with r so when beta is a greater value so let's say close to 1000 then we would say a recall has more importance so now we have a, a way of uh, of getting a metric called as f beta score which we can control between which we can control by using the term beta lower values of beta will give higher importance to precision higher values of beta will give higher importance to recall and then thereby we can choose a value of beta that works well for our case or for our metric that can help us evaluate precision and recall okay i hope this helped i i understand some of these terms are complicated uh, especially with accuracy precision and recall i would highly suggest uh, find some youtube video that explains this concept uh, very nicely and uh, uh, check out read out some more material in wikipedia that will help you with this material which will help you with this uh, understanding precision and recall and go to go over that you could also go over these metrics f1 score and f beta score which will help you understand how they are used okay in the next class i will i will talk a bit about uh, the the procedure uh, between training validation test and uh, we will see how that works out okay thank you so much i and i extended the class a little bit extra i have to run for my office meeting now okay okay thank you ma'am uh, we'll meet uh, tomorrow